Hey everybody, today we're going to install a DNS321. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of D-Link TV DIY. I'm Mike and I'm here to help you get more out of your network. So today what I wanted to do was take a step back and do a basic installation of a network attached storage device. In this case, it's the DNS321, which is a two bay network attached storage or NAS device. So when you're at the store and you're buying your DNS321, the other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is purchase a couple of serial ATA hard drives. These are the uh, style of hard drive that the DNS321 uses. The type of hard drive you wanna use is serial ATA. It has this style of connector on it. Do not use IDE style hard drives as they won't connect and have the potential of damaging the connector inside the box. And of course, the other thing that you're gonna to need to connect the DNS-323 is a connection to your router. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see what comes inside. The DNS-321 the documentation, an ethernet cable, the power supply, and a power cord. So to access the drive base, as this sticker here says, all we have to do is slide up the faceplate like this. To install one of the hard drives, all you have to do is take and line it up in the slot and then slide it in until it's seated all the way. Now, all you need to do is take the faceplate and slide it back onto the front of the DNS-321 and then you can go ahead and pull this bright orange sticker off. The next step is connecting our DNS-321 uh, to our router using the provided ethernet cable. Just connect it to the ethernet port in the back and then connect it to an open port on your router. So now just connect the small connector on the power supply into the back of the DNS-321 and then connect the power cord from the power supply into a surge suppressor. Now that we have everything connected, the last step is of course to press the little silver button here down at the bottom to turn it on. Now let's go ahead and take the documentation and get everything uh, configured and ready to go to use on our network. Start by inserting the CD into your CD-ROM drive and allowing it to auto run. When the screen comes up, you're going to want to use the top link, which is for the easy search utility. What this is going to do is go out and find your NAS. Once your NAS is in the top window, go ahead and select it and then click the configuration button to the right. This will load the DNS321's login screen. Since we haven't entered a password yet, just type admin into the username and click the configuration button below. The first window that comes up is where you're going to select what type of RAID you want to set up. The first option is standard, and this would set it up for two different drives. The second is for JBOD, and what this will do is create one giant drive. The third selection is for RAID 0 and what this is for is for striping which is for speed. I recommend using RAID 1 which is the last selection. What this is going to do is mirror your information so that the data on the two different drives is exactly the same. Here is where you're going to select the size of your RAID. What I'm going to do is create the maximum size of my hard drives by typing in the same number that's at the top of the screen. Then as you can see, there's no space left. Then just click the next button. Now the NAS will format your hard drives. So you just have to wait for this to complete and then click the restart button when it's done. After the NAS has restarted, you'll be back at the login screen. Once again, you're just going to type admin into the username and leave the password blank and click the configuration button. Now you should be at the DNS321's main screen. Just click the run wizard button in the middle of the page. 
On the first screen here, it just gives you an overview of what the wizard is going to run through. So just click the next button. Now we're going to add that password that has been blank these last couple of times. Type in something that you'll remember, but nobody else will be able to figure out. And then click next. Now you're going to want to pick your time zone and then click the next button. On this page, you're going to configure what type of IP address you're going to want to use. I recommend switching to a static IP address. That way, the IP address on the network attached storage device is always the same. This makes it easier when you're setting up the advanced features later on. Now click the next button. On this page is where you would change the name of the work group or the NAS device to make it easier to find. Then click the next button. Now just click restart and then you'll be back at the login screen. We're done with the web UI for now so you can go ahead and close your browser. This should take you back to the Easy Search utility. Highlight your NAS box once again, and you'll see that Volume 1 shows up in the box below. Go ahead and select Volume 1. From the drop down menu, you're going to want to pick a drive letter for your NAS. Then click the Connect button, and once you see that it's been connected, click OK. Now, when you open up My Computer, you'll see a drive with the drive letter that you picked. Double clicking on it opens it up so you can start using it just like a regular hard drive. Well, there you have it. That is the basic installation and configuration for the DNS321. Um, if you would like to see some of the more advanced features and how to set those up, you can check out the episodes that we have listed at the bottom of the screen. Um, but that's gonna do it for this episode of Dealing TV DIY. I'm Mike and thanks for watching.